Turn things now to your community focus. Congress is once again hoping to avoid a government shutdown. But will a proposal unveiled this weekend get across the finish line? Joining me now, Congressman Seth Magaziner. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. So I feel like every time we talk, we're talking about funding the government, avoiding a government shutdown. There's been some short-term stopgap measures um, put in place up until now. January 19th is the deadline. We learned earlier in the show that there's this proposal that's been floated. What do you think of it, and do you think it will get the, the right amount of support? Yeah. It's good news. I mean, my North Star on this is I always want to make sure that we're protecting programs that help working people in Rhode Island. Okay. So protecting programs like Title I, which funds hundreds of uh, public school teachers' mm -hmm. salaries, right? Uh, protecting the Social Security Administration, the VA. And for a long time, for most of 2023, some of my Republican colleagues were saying, we want to cut those programs mm -hmm. or else we're going to shut down the government. And uh, that would have had tremendously negative impacts for working people across our economy. So the good news is that this past weekend, my Republican colleagues, many of them have finally backed off mm. and are no longer threatening to shut down the government in exchange for those deep cuts to programs that, that are really essential programs. Um, but as always, the devil's in the details. Yeah. So all the way up until January 19th, I'm gonna continue working hard to make sure that we protect those programs and keep the government open. And I should mention you're heading back down to D.C. Uh, tomorrow. You talked about the government shutdown being sort of used as a bargaining chip. Do you worry that that will happen again this time in terms of funding for Ukraine and particularly the Republicans' focus on border security? Do you worry that the government uh, shutdown will be used as a bargaining chip there? Well, listen, this is an unsafe world, and as a Congress and as a country, uh, we need to take the right steps to keep people safe. Mm. And that is why President Biden requested a supplemental funding package that would do things like support our ally Ukraine in their war against Vladimir Putin, would uh, sec help secure the southern border by hiring more than 1,400 new Border Patrol officers, uh, among other things. And my Republican colleagues, unfortunately, uh, have been sitting on this plan that the president presented and have not given it a vote for three months now. Mm. So we got to give it a vote. we got to give it a vote. Um, I'm hopeful that we will be able to do so, but um, as of right now, that conversation is separate and apart from keeping the government open as it should be. Let's talk about 2023. It was your first year in Congress. Congress passed just 27 bills, making it the least productive session in decades. I've seen some reports it was the least productive session since the Great Depression. Mm. What's your message to constituents who hear that and think, what are ele our elected officials mm. doing down there? My message is that we need to work together in a bipartisan way across the aisle to get things done. Mm. Um, again, some of my Republican colleagues had a my way or the highway sort of approach where if they didn't get everything they wanted, they were going to shut the government down. And the reality is we have divided government right now. Republicans yeah. control the House, Democrats control the Senate and the White House. And the only way we're going to get anything done is by working together and compromising at times. And so my hope is that in 2024, my colleagues in Congress will recognize that, will recognize that in this era of divided government, we have to work together. Uh, that's what I'm committed to doing. I'll work with anyone if it's in the best interest of Rhode Islanders. And we're out of time, unfortunately, but what's your top priority for 2024? You know, I wanna make sure that we are um, doing things like funding career and technical education mm. to get people the skills they need to get into the workforce. Um, and we're also looking at ways to make uh, paid leave more available mm. and more common across the workforce uh, so that when people have jobs, they're jobs that they can also uh, support their family off of at the same time. All right, Congressman Seth Magaziner, thanks so much for being here at 4. Thank you.